Hi, I'm Dan Toomey, and in this webcast, we're going to discuss how you can use out-of-the-box pipeline components to enable schema validation in BizTalk Server 2010. The important thing to note first is that BizTalk does not perform schema validation by default. If an XML receive pipeline is used, BizTalk does perform a high-level inspection of the message to determine the message type, making sure that there is a corresponding schema deployed to the configuration database. However, this type is only defined by the target namespace and the root node name. Provided the message is well-formed XML, the actual structure of the internal content may be completely invalid, and BizTalk will still persist the message to the message box. Now that we know that we need to explicitly enable schema validation, here are two ways to accomplish this within a receive pipeline. The first is to use the out of the box XML receive pipeline and simply set a couple of instance properties within the pipeline configuration on the receive location. Because this method does not require any custom code, it can be applied after an application has already been deployed. The second method involves creating and deploying a custom pipeline that includes an XML validator component within the validation stage. This component is part of the BizTalk toolbox and doesn't require any actual coding. However, you do need to add a custom pipeline to host the component as none of the out of the box pipelines include it. Let's look at the first method to get started. Assuming you have the receive location configured to use an XML receive pipeline, you need to go into the instance properties by clicking the ellipsis button next to the pipeline drop down list and then to change two properties. The first property to set is the document spec names property. By default, this will be blank, but to enable schema validation, you will need to provide a list of every schema that defines a legitimate message through this location. Note that once you enter a schema here, all other message types that attempt to enter via this location will be rejected, even if the schema is deployed to the database. The schemas must be entered using the fully qualified name of the .NET class representing the schema. It can be quite tricky to get this right, so we'll look at that in more detail on the next slide. The only other property you must set is to change the validate document flag from its default setting of false to true. Note that if you set this flag without setting the document spec names property, then you will get a runtime error stating that validation can only be performed when document schemas are provided. Getting the fully qualified name specification correct is a bit tricky, and if you get it wrong, then you'll just get runtime errors with every message submitted. A sample fully qualified name is shown here. As you can see, it is made up of the .NET name of the schema, followed by the name of the assembly. A comma separates these two items. If you need to specify multiple schemas, use a pipe character to delimit them. The spaces around the pipe character are optional. The easiest way to get the fully qualified name is to open the schema properties by double-clicking the item in the schemas list under the application. The general page lists both the .NET name and the assembly name for the schema. Just concatenate these two fields with a delimiting comma to get the fully qualified name. The advantage of using this method is that there is no custom development required, since it is achieved simply by configuring out-of-the-box components in the BizTalk admin console. This means that an administrator can add this validation to a receive port after the application has been fully developed and deployed, without requiring any new development cycle. The changes are effective immediately. You don't even need to restart the host instances. A potential disadvantage of this approach is that it can be tricky to get the fully qualified names correct, and you won't know this until runtime when validation just doesn't work as expected. It also tends to obscure the functionality a bit because unless you look into the instance properties, you won't see that schema validation is enabled. Finally, there is a situation where specifying multiple schemas that share the same target namespace can lead to runtime ambiguity issues. That discussion is beyond the scope of this module, but the following blog post describes details about this error and how to resolve it. Here we have a simple BizTalk project in Visual Studio 2010. As you can see, it contains schemas defining a simple request and response, a map between the two, and a very simple orchestration that simply executes the map and returns the response. I've already deployed this application and published it using the WCF Publishing Wizard, so let's give it a test. First, we'll look at the receive location configuration so that you can see that I'm using the default XML receive pipeline, and I haven't changed any of the standard properties on that. Here we have a valid request message for our service. I'm going to submit it using SOAP UI. We expect to get a successful response, which we do. Now I'm going to make the message invalid simply by commenting out a mandatory field, and I'll resubmit the message again. 
notice we still get a successful response. The reason is because I didn't change the root node name or the target namespace, which is all that BizTalk needed to recognize the message type. It didn't do any further validation beyond that. Now we'll go back into our BizTalk receive location and turn on schema validation. By going into the properties here, I'll have to set the document spec name for the schema that I want validated. I happen to have that in my clipboard, so I'll paste it in there. I'll also need to set the validate document property to true. Now by saving those changes, they're effective immediately. We don't have to restart any services. Now I'll go back to SOAP UI and resubmit our invalid message. And this time, we get a SOAP fault. I'm going to look at the raw view because the text wraps and it's a little bit easier to see the reason for the error, which is a schema validation error. So BizTalk is now validating the message all the way through. The alternative method for validating schemas is to use the XML validator pipeline component, which is installed into the Visual Studio toolbox with the developer edition of BizTalk. In order to host this component, we need to create a custom receive pipeline, but this is a lot easier than it sounds. Using the graphical pipeline designer tool in Visual Studio, it is merely a matter of dragging and dropping an item or two from the toolbox onto the appropriate stage container. And in many cases, we don't even have to set any properties on the component. The advantages of using this method include the fact that we don't have to mess around with tricky document specifications and fully qualified names. The pipeline designer gives us a nice GUI tool to select schemas if we really need to specify them. It also makes the validation feature more apparent in the configuration, especially if we name our custom pipeline appropriately. And finally, this method provides a workaround to that ambiguity issue we mentioned earlier about multiple schemas sharing the same target namespace. On the downside, it does require a bit of development effort, so an administrator can't just decide to add this feature later on without a new release and deployment. However, I would advise developers to always include a custom pipeline for validation anyway, even if they're not sure it's required, because then the administrator is always free to choose which pipeline to be used for any given receive location. Back in our BizTalk project in Visual Studio, I'm now going to add a new custom receive pipeline to host my XML validator component. So we're going to add new item. We're going to get a new receive pipeline, give it a meaningful name. And you'll see right away the pipeline designer service opens up. So all I need to do is go into my toolbox and drag an XML validator component onto the validate stage. I'm also going to drag an XML disassembler component onto the disassemble stage. This is necessary in order to parse the XML and set properties on the message context, such as the BizTalk message type and any other properties marked for promotion in the schema. Now that's really all the custom development I have to do for this demo, provided I don't need any further constraints. The XML disassembler will check the message and ensure that we have a schema deployed that matches the message type of the request. If we want to restrict the incoming message types to a subset of all of the schemas currently deployed, then we can go to the Document Schemas property, click this ellipsis here, and simply choose the schema this, that we want to limit this pipeline from accepting. We don't need to do that here, so I'll cancel that for now. On the XML validator component itself, we really don't need to set any properties because by default, it will validate the message against any matching schema it finds deployed to the database. Now all I need to do is build the project and redeploy. Going back into the BizTalk admin console, we'll just refresh the group so it picks up the new configuration. And then we'll go back into the receive location, and now I can select my custom pipeline. And if we go into the properties, we'll see that we've got our XML disassembler component and our XML validator component. And if I wish, I can override the settings on the document spec names for both of these components, and that would be particular to this instance, but we don't need to do that here. Now we'll go back to SOAP UI and resubmit our invalid message, and we should expect to see the same SOAP fault with the same validation error, which we do. In this webcast, we have shown that deep level schema validation at the receive port is not a default functionality in BizTalk server we have to explicitly take steps to enable it. We also saw that there are two ways to implement this validation using out-of-the-box components. The first way is by configuring instance properties on the XML receive pipeline in the port, which doesn't require any custom development effort. 
and secondly, by creating a custom pipeline to host an XML validation component. I hope you have found this webcast useful and informative. Please also take some time to visit our user group's web portal, where you'll find plenty of other links and resources. If you decide to join, and membership is free, you'll not only have access to more areas of the portal, including downloads of presentations, code samples, and participation in a discussion thread, but you'll also receive event notifications and newsletters from BrizTalk. I promise you won't be spammed, and you can always unsubscribe if you change your mind. Again, I'm Dan Toomey, and I want to thank you for listening to this webcast. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to use the YouTube comment stream.